Hibiscus Petroleum is best known as the country's first and most successful SPAC. But seven years on and two big assets in, does it still think of itself as the scrappy up-and-comer? We sit down with Managing Director Kenneth Pereira to talk about asset management, future acquisitions and why Hibiscus succeeded when others didn't. Hibiscus, of course, is the country's first oil and gas SPAC. In fact, first SPAC period. And it's by far the most successful one. How did you guys do it when everybody else didn't seem to? I can tell you how we did it. The trick in a SPAC is to start small. We kept our capital raised to a modest amount. We raised 245 million ringgit in the IPO. Um, the important thing was the, in, a, in a SPAC formula, the investors are actually investing in a shell. The investors are kind of taking a leap of faith with the management. Correct. So we had to demonstrate to them that we knew what we were talking about. There wasn't much li literature in the market about it. We went on a roadshow. When we say a roadshow, we mean Kuching, Joe Baru, Saramban, KL, Klang, Ipoh, Penang, those type of places. We met investors one-to-one -one in, in the offices of remisers and, and stock, stock brokers and all of that. And we explained to them uh, over lunch many times. And we told them you know, exactly what we were trying to do. And slowly, we kind of built up a little bit of a following. Then came the time to actually acquire an asset. We knew many of the investors almost from the roadshow itself. So they showed up at the EGM and when they saw us and they listened to us again and we explained to them the opportunity, I think they, they then voted in favour. So I think of the acquisition and, and then we managed to cross the line and, and we got the acquisition through and then we became a, a fully fledged normal main board company. You actually had this target that you set for Anasuria of 5,000 barrels per day by June 19th. That was what you had. How much closer are you to that kind of like target? As of June 30th, the most recent set of results went out, we were producing roughly about 3,800 barrels a day oil equivalent. Recently, we drilled a side track, uh, what we call the P2 side track on Gulima Field in the Anasuria cluster. Um, we tested it, and this is a disclosed piece of information. About two weeks ago, we disclosed that this single well alone net to us was producing 2,300 barrels a day. Okay. We think we are going to be producing in excess of 4,000 barrels a day now in Anasuya. We are slowly executing projects that will take us to 5,000 barrels a day. And we think we will do that probably ahead of time. But we've given ourselves a fair, a fair target here. Yeah. You've also now competed North Sabah as well. Focus, again, you know, we're talking about CAPEX, is actually on integrating operations, you know, into existing processes. Can you give us a bit more detail on what that kind of means? The, the common thing between North Sabah and Anasuria is the fact that we bought both assets actually from Shell. Both assets people have trans transferred across from Shell to Hibiscus mm -hmm. or in the case of the UK to the Anasuria operating company or joint venture operating company there. So um, the, the people bring along with them a lot of competence, they've been well trained, they're very very structured in the way they execute their work etc. What we wanted to bring to them was the kind of agility and the kind of entrepreneurial spirit in our company. Okay? So we wanted to let them know that you know, we, we, are, we are about an, uh, a small uh, David. You, know, you, you come from an organization that is a Goliath and, and we, are, we are a little David running around trying to get things done quickly. Speed is essential urgency. We're trying to bring things to the market quickly. So that was like our focus. So we, we've... Um, introduce processes that do, does this. Hibiscus has not really incurred any borrowings. You guys are quite in a good uh, cash position. Keep it this way though, as you expand your assets, can you even keep it this way? We, are, we have raised in total throughout the seven years about 700 million. We have a market cap today of about 1.5, 1.6 billion. Mm -hmm. So the money we have raised has doubled. Will we keep away from borrowings? I don't think so. I think the next step that the company takes, um, we feel we have a good platform to take a decent size step in terms of another asset or, or another project. And this will require us to borrow something. However, we are guided by our board to be conservative in the gearing ratios that we are going to kind of, you know, uh, take on. What kind of give back are you giving back to the shareholders? The capital appreciation in the stock is one thing. Yes, that's Last year, uh, this year in March, we came out with a free warrants issue. Mm -hmm. 
the Warrens have done very well, and in fact, it, it probably, you know, uh, how they did surpassed our expectations. I think the Warrens we should free, and uh, they've reached a high of nearly 50 cents, and you know, trading around 40 cents now. So they, if you look at it as a, it's a quasi-dividend in a sense, but really we're a capital, we're, we're kind of a growth story. We still believe we're in the growth story phase. I know you're, you're always looking, but what potential new acquisitions are seriously on consideration for Hibiscus? We're looking at the places we're already in. So we're in the UK, we're in Malaysia, we're in Australia. We are here in these places because these places have a very strong legal framework. We're comfortable with the legal framework of these countries and this is why, and we understand these countries, how the legal framework works. So we are happy with the, with the legal framework. We're going to stay around these areas and we're going to try and close that gap that's, you know, kind of identified in our mission.